There they go, all the crowds streaming into the 2012 Iwa show at Nuremberg. We're going in right alongside them and we're going to bring you everything we think you'll find interesting. Catch you on the inside. Here's a bit of excitement for us. I'm going to be testing this very, very soon. This is the new BSA Scorpion SE in 2.5 calibre. Note the black bolt, tactical type stock, threaded for a silencer, eight shot magazine, standard bolt action, BSA's new magazine, so it's self indexing one. Now, this is coming towards the ideal ratting gun. Ambidextrous stock, fast as you like, flick that bolt back, another shot. I'm going to be bagging one after the show. You'll be seeing it in Airgun World exclusively. We're looking for some rack guns these days. I think we found one. Still on the BSA stand, we're continuing the SE theme now. SE Special Edition is going to be big for BSA. Now this is the Lightning XL SE with a new stock. Look at that stock. Skip checkered, walnut stock. Walnut looking for certain. It's fresh now, it's brand spanking new, it's, never, it's not been released yet, but again, we've got a test of that, we'll grab that for air gunner, and you'll see it first. BSA guns, believe me, they're moving. Can't leave the BSA stand without explaining the new GRT stuff for you. GRT, gas ram technology, and here it is in the flesh, we're in a lightning, Looks exactly the same as a spring powered version, only it's got a gas ram inside it. All the things you love about springs, but a little more consistent, a little easier to cock, and of course they don't wear out. As I said, BSA guns really go in places these days. The gamo stand here is massive, and featuring right in the middle of it are these, what they call the five new technologies. First one up is the smooth action trigger. This is a brand new trigger system from Gamo, featuring far more sensitivity, far more control, higher quality product altogether. Next door, we've got Whisper Fusion. This is a silencer system. You can see how it all works. And there it is in its cutaway form. Gamo are getting really, really big as far as technology goes, not just production. And they're invading the American and the European market. Next door, we've got IGT, inert gas technology, which Gamma have also migrated onto the BSA. Here's the gas piston, and that's how it works. All nicely illustrated with various monitors and attractive people enjoying their shooting experience, look. Moving along, we've got Whisper, the quiet gun. It's called Bull Whisper, they call this. Noise expansion technology, and there's the cutaway inside. It's fairly tricky inside there, it has to be said. And that will be applied to certain of the rifles. And finally, SWA, the shockwave absorber. Now, this is the recoil pad system. There you go. Basically, it's just a squishy butt pad that it will absorb the recoil from the ultra high power spring piston guns that are selling out here. They've got the new system now with, I think they're 32 or 33 millimeter diameter with the gas ram technology, and they are doing some serious velocities. And what they're doing is basically giving you a squishy butt pad that absorbs the shock at the shoulder. But when you've got it all lined up at a stand as big as this one, with all this behind it, all that to come, you can tell that Gamo are absolutely serious about this market. It's a big market and they want their share of it. Just before I sign off from the BSA stand, here we go, here's a new pistol fitted laser genetic sub-zero. Over there you'll see a little green dot, adjustable size, perfect for uh, our Phil's eye pass shooting I would have thought. We'll be testing this, or at least Phil will, and uh, it looks very exciting, it's fairly lightweight, it's all been sort of uprated and ramped, all new battery technology inside there. 
looking exciting, even if you don't shoot pistols. Laser genetics, sub-zero. I'm on the tracer stand, and in addition to their superb range of lights, I want to give you a little practical lesson on how a battery can put more rabbits in the bag. In the bad old days, something this big, it's very, very light, really, it's just a few ounces. The equivalent of that, when I was a kid, and out learning my lamping game was a motorcycle battery, a wet acid motorcycle battery that weighed a ton and used to rot my clothing away at the end of the night. Now, with that, or even with a smaller one, through one of these LED lamps that last forever, that gives you the energy literally in your lamp and in yourself to walk miles farther, to put yourself in better shooting positions. You're not lugging it around. You're not having it pull your shoulder down or ruin your shooting position. And literally, these things will get you more rabbits because you'll be out in the field longer, they last longer, and so do you. They're the Tracer Packs, lithium polymer technology. They are so light, it's unbelievable. They, this smaller one here weighs about as much as a small transistor radio. You do not notice the weight of it. It's about as heavy as a pocket full of change, which you wouldn't carry with you when you're lamping, but they don't, they don't weigh anything. And with those lights, like the TriStar here, you get all the power, none of the weight penalty, and you keep going in the field for longer on both levels. Absolutely excellent. These are the must-have kit for the modern lamper. If you're watching this, that means I've got this film cleared. I needed to clear it because what it shows is something absolutely revolutionary here. You know I'm a big fan of spring guns. I always have been. I always will be. But this is a new dimension for spring guns. This is the Walther LGV range. This one's the Competition Ultra, top of the range model with the adjustable cheek piece. But the real information is about what goes on inside this thing. If ever a ready tuned air gun hits the market, it's this one. It has a piston that floats on synthetic bearings. And when I say floats, it floats and rotates completely. It's got a circular groove inside it that the trigger system locates and wherever, whatever position the rotation takes it, the trigger system, could, the cocking rod can always locate it. But that's only half the story. Walther were big on competition rifles back in the 50s and 60s and when spring guns sort of ruled. Now, they've used a lot of that technology and they've updated it. Inside here, inside the mounting and around the chassis, the whole thing is mounted on synthetic and it's sprung so the tension is maintained. Every single piece of this rifle is ultra efficiency. It stops vibration. It cuts down on cocking effort. It cuts down on friction. It shoots. It doesn't recoil as such. It sort of thrums a bit. Where, where a, a conventional rifle will kick, this sort of hums. It's, it's quite stupendous. It's also got this barrel lock system here that maintains the lock up and keeps, it, keeps the barrel in line shot after shot. I think you can tell I'm genuinely excited about this thing. It's got an excellent trigger on it. It's got an auto safety. The bluing is exemplary. This is not a cheap and cheerful rifle, believe me. This is a quality rifle and it will be offered for quality money. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to make other manufacturers think about what they're doing. This thing is high precision. It shoots like a tuned rifle. It really does. And believe me, I've shot enough tuned rifles. Look out for it. I'm hoping to bag the exclusive test on this thing. It's the Walther LGV range. It's going to be coming and you're going to love it, I promise you, just as much as I do. Check out the new air arm stand. Have a look at this. All integrated, all style matched, and their new brochures out and about. I've got them first thing in the morning, actually, before the, the rush gets here. This is going to be mobbed later on today. But uh, that is one nice way to show off some of the best air, air gun products in the world. Look at that. How pretty is that? All the rifles here, plenty of the new brochures. There'll be loads of staff here later on to answer all the questions. Looking good. You can see what the sign says. It's hats and air guns. Copper look at these. This is what you call a solidly built pre-charged pneumatic air gun. The BT-65RB Elite. Note the uh, spare mags just in front of the trigger guard. Bolt action, multi-shot, 
adjustable cheek piece, adjustable butt pad, solid as a rock. Look at that. Now that's a rifle that you think might last forever. We've got the Picatinny mounting rails on the front, an adjustable front sight there, gauge in the front end, and it comes in 177.22 and 2.5. I think I might snag me one of these for testing. I like the look of it. That's all there, isn't it? Here's one you won't have seen before. It's the Spitfire from Webley. You may uh, think you've seen the lines or something similar. You won't have seen that extendable foil stop though. That swings out, however you want it. Same room for various bolt-ons on there. Single shot, pull back to seal the breech, and a moulded butt section and a sling swivel on the bottom. This is the prototype. We'll be getting the real thing very, very soon, pretty much as soon as we come back from EWA. And we'll be testing it. There we go. The Webley Spitfire. The one and only FX Air Guns. You know I'm a big fan of this company and the things it does, and especially this. This is the FX Verminator Mark II. This is possibly my favourite air gun. I've got one of the newer ones. There it is with a ball barrel. It's got the scope mounted and everything. You may notice something a bit extra about this. Well, this particular Verminator has got another string to its bow. Watch this. Now this is not for UK, this is for export, mainly US. There's a compartment there, look, loaded with arrows. And just above the arrows is what they call the, um, there's the silencer there, but just above here is this. This is the arrow barrel. And what we'll do is just slide an arrow over it and we'll show you how it works. This fits into the rifle. You change the conventional pellet barrel for this. And as you can see, the arrow slides right inside it. So the actual discharge of the air starts about here and drives that arrow with a ridiculous amount of accuracy. And it can be used for target practice or where it's permitted, it can be used to hunt. Hence the reel. If you're hunting fish and you want to bring them in, you can do so. There's the conventional barrel there, right at the end of the, the case here, and that can be swapped in seconds. This really is a total hunting system, and only the uh, the genius of Frederick Axelson could come up with something like that. The FX Verminator Mark II plus the airbow system, absolutely amazing. I'm still on the FX stand, and here's a big old change I'd like to show you. You see the, the normal sort of matte black, slightly hard, crackly finish to the synthetic stock there? Well, that's on its way out. Here's what's coming in. This is the soft touch. It's a different type of finish, more rubberized, softer, warm to the touch, just looks slicker. It's less reflective, just as tough, just as strong as a compound. It's the same sort of compound it's been made from, but it's just a nice new sort of upgrade. And there's another one I want to show you, just on the wall, just behind me. Swing it around. Look at this. You see that? That's the new match trigger. Goes on a, on a little rail there, fully adjustable, down to ridiculous amounts of grams that I couldn't possibly deal with. And uh, rumour has it that um, there's a brand new aluminium stock sort of match gun coming out from FX. But that trigger, now that I've tried it, that's a nice thing. That's really worth having. I use a Royale myself, and I'm seriously thinking about an upgrade to that. FX, always moving along. Freddie Axelson never ever sits still. Here's one look. This is the sort of more affordable version. No frills, T12 400, bolt action, bottle fed, does it all, except it hasn't got all the sort of whistles and bells on it. But if you want a, a rifle that's a tool for hunting, vermin clearance, not a bad bit of kit. 
How about this one though? This one is utterly bonkers. This is an FX Independence with an airbow barrel fitted to it, look. The barrel goes right inside that arrow, as you'll see with the Verminator Mark II. There's the spare barrel, the conventional sort of pellet firing barrel. And if you look at that big screw there, I just watched Freddie change this barrel in about 25 seconds and it doesn't lose zero. So that's an Independence pump up shooting arrows. Oh, there's something new here. I always like to bring you something that just looks right. Nothing to do with air guns. This is the Sauer 202 Gladiator. A little bit elaborate, as you might think. And just to make sure you know it's a Gladiator, we've got ourselves a Gladiator. There it is, look. I think I might adopt this style of dress. I can see myself going to work in this. People in the office would certainly take notice of me. Yeah, I can fancy that. It's long been a dream of mine that we'd have air guns as pretty as full-on stalking rifles. This is the Sauer 202 Highland. And just imagine if that was a pre-charged rifle. But with the efficiency of the valves and things these days, and the requirement for smaller and smaller air cylinders, maybe, maybe, we'll have something that looks like that. What a lovely looking tool. Here we are on the H&N stand, and this is rather interesting. You see these impact cavities behind the pellets, basically what that dark column is. That's the sort of thing that our own Phil Price was investigating about three years ago. You see, there we are. That's the big cavity cast, and there's the pellet on the end of it. There we go. See, we're not always behind in technology. Phil was there ages ago. Clever lad, Phil. Knows what he's at. Just while we're here, this is a new sort of, I suppose, expanding pellet. It'll be interesting to see if it really does expand like that. And I'm filming this through glass, if you're wondering why there's a bit of glare. But, um, yeah, interesting stuff. Just a few minutes of footage to show you that we've still got a way to go. Look at these mounts for pistol sights, rifle sights. They're quick fit, lever lock, superbly made systems in all sorts of finishes. They do carbon fiber finish, they do a camo finish, but they are absolutely gorgeous. Look at that, that's a beautiful thing. And there's a silvered one over there. Then we get up to the, the camo ones here. And if you were putting together something truly special, I think you'd want a mount that looked like that. You can't do Ewa without doing Byrock. And I'd like to show you another string to the company's bow, really. We know all about their sort of world-beating pre-charge range. We know about the high-end springers, more of which over here. They've got some new, very nice checkering with the name picked out. We've got the beautiful little HW95 Luxus. But what most people, or air gunners anyway, won't know is that Varach make superbly stylish stalking rifles. Look at those. Aren't they pretty? Nice looking rifles. Match version there. This is all live ammo. And all sleek and very elegant. The side of Varach not many people see. With all the fuss about the Diana pre-charged, it's uh, easy to forget what else they do, and they do an awful lot more. Look at this, the Panther 31 Pro Combat. Silencer, short barrel, synthetic stock, totally practical, anti-vermin to all this. Completely sleek and stylish, <coughs> lightweight, full power, does the job, well affordable, last a lifetime we should never forget the mainstay of the sport which is springers like these that sort of march silently on without us making too much of a fuss about them maybe it's time we did from an entirely practical diana to a stylish one
This is the 350 Magnum Superior and it's rather cleverly decked out in a timber stock that looks like five star walnut. Except it isn't. It's one of those clever treatments they can give to make things look like something they're not. But makes it all the more affordable. Still get the style of it. It's pretty. I had to really look closely to see that this wasn't what I thought it was. Very well done. Still the same practical rifle though. The Magnum 350 Superior. Yes, I know you've seen the Wolverine before. Day State are just about to launch it now. But have you seen it really up close? Things like the new safety. Looking it from side to side. Beautiful titanium finish. See the double thumb groove at the back there for pure ambidextrous performance. Lovely chip, absolutely superb stippling. Great stock. Chunky as you like though. And it, it points absolutely superbly this thing. It really does. It's a lot lighter than it looks. And I'm days away from testing it. And I really can't wait. It's also, inside there, has got an ingenious Steve Harper developed means of stopping double loading. When the mag's finished, that's it. It's quite a remarkable tool, it really is. And can't wait to get my hands on it. I've just spent about 20 minutes on the Jack Pike stand and uh, here's what caught my eye. This is the new Hunter's boot. This is Jack Pike going definitely upmarket. This is full Vibram sole. You've got a sort of a scent lock system inside there. The upper is described as full new buck. And they're going to do a version in English oak camo look. Now that's Cordura, not leather. All the protection you need, all the grip you need, plus a bit of camo. There's a middle one here. And I've got the main man standing right behind me. What's that one called, Glenn? This is the uh, Fieldman boot. This that's the Fieldman. Called. Shorter boot look. Probably better for summer wear. Same sort of new buck thing, full sort of bumpers around the outside. Brilliant sole, definite upmarket. Now there's thousands of boots at this show, thousands of them. And they go up to ludicrous prices. And uh, these are, although they're higher spec than uh, we're used to from Jack Pike, they're still affordable. And they do everything you want to do. We're actually been lucky enough to secure a letter of the month deal with the Hunter's Boots. Jack Pike been very generous to us there. So uh, if you write in and you get selected, you're going to win a pair of these and that can't be bad. Well I'm going to take myself for a mooch around the rest of the stand. Look, you can see the size of it, it's absolutely huge. And uh, if I find anything else, I'll be back onto you. I've said it before and here I am saying it again. If you get one item of camouflage clothing, get a, a mesh suit or a bug suit or a net suit or whatever you want to call it. I'm still on the Jack Pike stand. Here's their version really affordable, loads of camo, no thermal effects whatsoever. So you can have a t-shirt under that or you can have full thermal winter clothing and you'll still get the camo effect. It moves with you, it breaks up your outline, it keeps you cool, keeps your mosquitoes away and you can slip that over virtually any clothing you like and you've got a really good camouflage outfit. If you add the hood and the gloves, you're pretty much totally camoed up there's also a version with like um, it's a leaf concealment system I believe it's called and if we sweep out to here there it is that's pretty much the ultimate that breaks up everything our own Phil Hardman absolutely loves it and if I could recommend one suit and one suit alone that would be it a mesh suit with a bit of leaf concealment over it as I say you can turn up in it whatever you like slip that over the top and you're all camoed up fine bit of kit, affordable and if it gets snagged and ripped up and you had to buy one every couple of years still do it service most versatile piece of clothing in the hunting field in my opinion there you go look aircon for shooters oh yes little owl working overtime here look Whee! a bracing breeze I'm in the British Pavilion and I'm on the stand of some of my favourite people, Heidelback. 
three years ago at the British shooting show, I saw a little chair thingy that looked like it was made out of Land Rover parts in an obscure little booth. And I walked up to it and I thought, that's got some potential, that. And now, here we have lovely little stand, beautifully appointed, all the way over here in Iwa. Idle back and now a player. And that's because of two things. Product quality, which is what you're looking at now, and customer service. I get dozens of people call me, tell me how well these people treat them. And that's always good. Always good to hear that something you recommended personally is delivered with such service. Basically, you've got a shooting seat, total support system that lets you keep your feet planted on the ground and you can sit in one of these things for hours and I do. I sometimes take it out without a rifle. Just sit around in it and watch stuff. Reconnoitre my shoe or just watch the wildlife. Or I use it to zero, I use it to test stuff. It's a fantastic piece of kit and it's got better every year. It's smaller upgrades and little tweaks they've done. And now, here they are. Biggest shooting show of them all. Advertising their wares. Great stuff. Lovely to see how well they've come on. Some of the best things at this show aren't always the biggest. I'm on the Abbey stand. Here we go, this is multi-coated lens cleaner. It does what it says on the bottle. Once you've cleaned your lens of your scope, got it all nice and sparkly, we shift to this stuff. Now this is absolutely excellent gear, this. This is anti-fog. What you do is, you coat your lens in it, give it a few squirts, wipe away the excess, and let it dry. And then you don't get that moment when you bring your rifle out of your warm car, take it out of its warm case into the cold air and you can't see anything for about 10 minutes. And what they generally do, and we might, we've all done this, is we will scrub the lens, try and clean it off, and any dust that's stuck to it will turn into grinding paste and you could damage the cones and even the lens. This stuff works and it even works on the insides of car windscreens so they don't mist up as well. I'm going to be trying this out straight after the show and I'll report back to you in the mag. But at the moment, this looks like the answer to quite a lot of our prayers. I've been having a chat with Nigel from Brocock. Here we are, here's the contour range. Single shot, lightweight little rifles. Here we are, look, contour Super 6. And underneath is the one I really want to show you. The specialist. By specialist, for me that means rat gun. Rat and feral really. Now, adjustable butt pad, fast action grip, totally ambidextrous, fully sleeve barrel, threaded for a silencer, and bolt action, six shot magazine. This stock you're seeing there isn't going to be the finished item, this is still a prototype but it will look a great deal like that. It'll be a, more of a dull, sort of rubberized type finish, but um, handles well, handles fast. We've got the test on it. And as a rat gun, I think that's gonna take some beating. We'll explore calibers and things and see what works best. There it is, the Brocock Specialist. Nice bit of kit. I've always told you the simple things are the best. I'm here on the Napier stand and here we have Steve Rowe, the governor here. He's going to tell us about a simple system to keep your guns protected. Over to you Steve. Hello there. Right, VP90. A very, very simple system. It's a sachet like a tea bag. This stuff migrates onto metal and stops it from rusting. End of story. Write the date on it that you've installed it, stick it on the inside of your gun safe and forget about it for 12 months. That will protect any gun safe a 10 gun safe, in fact a cubic metre, 35 and a half cubic feet for 12 months or more. And it does it without absorbing moisture, it's not silica gel, it does exactly the opposite. Because the last thing you want to do is to dry out a wooden stock because you'll crack it. And to remind you that that is actually in your safe, with each one you now get a free magnet which you stick on the outside of the safe just as a memory jogger that there's one inside. So you might even remember to change it in 12 months. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. Well done. And uh, a visual reminder 
you're, not, you're less likely to forget it and you're going to keep your guns protected. And that works for air guns, shotguns, any guns. Any, any gun that's made of metal. Brilliant. Okay then, see you soon Steve. Thanks mate. Cheers mate. BKL mounts. What a brilliant little idea this is. I am always getting either questions or solutions that readers have come up with to put spirit levels on their rifles. Look at this though, there's a load of solutions here from BKL. You've got the swinging out ones, adjust, tighten up, all clamped around the scope, slim fittings, not full size mount fittings, fold away so they don't get in the way of anything. Great idea, dead simple. Hassle your supplier about BKL scope levelers, clamp on your tube. There you go. So, if you ask me again, I'll tell you to go to BKL. If you ever wondered why a fine Verkbau air rifle costs what it costs, have a look at this lot. This is the 700 cut through to show you what goes on. Look at all that. Every component, precision made, tested, developed, improved, and that's just the firing system. Absolutely fascinating. Of all the thousands and thousands of scopes here, you might not think this is too remarkable, but it is. It's a Nikon EFR Pro Staff 3 to 9 by 40, and that bit is what makes it remarkable. It's got a focusing objective lens. It's built, we are told, with the, all the emphasis on lens quality and the rest of it is up to Nikon standards as you would imagine. Matte black finish, rubberized sort of turrets, you've got a finger friendly dials obviously and all in all it's lightweight, it's compact, simple, reliable and it's a Nikon so look forward to testing that. Here's something that particularly appeals to me. Look, camo sort of sleepover type tents, all fold up. They go into incredibly tiny packages. But if you want to spend a few nights out in the field, like I do, imagine having the luxury of this thing. This is more than a hide. This is a, an accommodation from what I can see of it. Obviously, it's not intended for air gunners and lowly folk like us. But um, it would certainly do especially this little thing here, look. Now, I don't think I could quite stretch across that, but most normal shaped humans could. And I could certainly get into that one, without a doubt. I just wonder if this stuff will actually catch on. It's all camoed up, sort of fleck tarnish, but something like, there's a, there's a sort of a, an overnight, very basic kipping shelter, but this here, that's actually, just under seven feet across the diagonal. It's got a big old blow-up mattress on it. And uh, yeah, you could. You could definitely do a couple of nights in that. It'll be right on the land. And it folds up into something about the size of a dartboard. I really could go for this, I think. I may have to make further inquiries. That's another Ewa show over. I'll leave you with some shots of the hardest working bloke at the whole show. He's the bloke who stays here all day long with his remote control thingy operating the Swarovski blimp. There it is. Flying around all day, every day. That guy down there steering it all over the place. The crowds are leaving. It's about half five. We're absolutely walked out, I've got to say. We've done about eight or nine miles a day walking around. There's a ton of stuff. It's the most I've ever seen here. And I think we've got the gist of it. I think we've got the interesting stuff that we're allowed to show you. And all we've got to do now is follow up with a load of tests and a load more talk about developments and when we can have the stuff. But from EWA 2012, looks like the blimp's leaving too. I'm signing off. Hope you enjoyed it.